Oh wow! Look! Oh my god, what's that? Oh that's cool! Oh, oh it's not even it's not even oh broken. It's a local one. Oh, oh my god, yes. Yes, it's look. A blue poison bottle. It doesn't have any. Hello. There are the beans. <laughs> um, so I just thought I'd explain a little bit about this video before it starts. Basically, Mum and I were supposed to be going food shopping, uh, but decided to go for a walk beforehand, and we end up stumbling upon um, a Victorian bottle dump which was quite incredible. So the video was um, completely unplanned. There's no nice little cutaway shots or anything like that. I get very overexcited and we find some really cool things with uh, some great history attached to them. So I really hope you enjoy the video and please comment below if you see anything um, that we missed or know anything that we don't um, in the comments below. It's really helpful and yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. And already I can see odd bit of old iron there and uh, bits of really old bottles and pottery oh oh wow look oh my god what's that oh that's cool oh, oh it's not even it's not even oh broken god, look at it oriental tooth Paste. Wow. Juice brim brown. Manchester. That's come all over way. Manchester. Oh wow. Since we're in the Scottish borders. Look, it's been made to look like. Uh, oh, bottles. I just saw something else. Oh, a bottle bottle. Oh, this is interesting. Oh yeah, bottle. Oh, cool. I've never found one of these either. How interesting. I've never found one of these before. This is weird. Don't know what that is. Can't help it because I saw all of this sticking out of the bank. I'm really excited. Oh, look at this! All Victorian rubbish. Oh, I like that. Oh, look, that's like crystallised. Ah, another bovril. Oh, it's broken. I see something sticking out there? Broken. Oh, you can kind of see the old remains of the old label on there. Oh, nothing on it. Oh, it's a chuckle block. Oh, that would have been a beautiful blue bottle. What a shame. See this here. Oh, look at that beautiful pattern. Oh my God, there's so much sticking out here. Oh, this has got writing on it. It's a shame it's broken. It would have been a, um, you know, a bottle with a, a cod bottle. Cod bottle, that's what it is. Shame it's broken. It has something on it. Oh, oh, that's the cod marble, that's the marble. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at this. I really like stoneware. Put it up there. What are, I found a few of these skinny neck blue bottles, there's a smaller one here. What would have they have been? What would have they been used for? What would have been in them? I'm not quite sure. I feel like this is a bit of a rescue mission because it's all going to be covered up. But what is this? It's got... Really? That... Is that a bottle? No idea what that is off. Oh, I put them in my bag. Uh, there's a bottle here. Oh, it's another cod bottle. Has things on it, written on it, but it's, they seem to be all broken. I found three. Because kids just break and get the marbles 
Oh, this has something on it. Can't quite see what that is. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at them later. I'm gonna have to look at them later, but I'm just trying to get out. And that's got anything on it. Oh, what's that? Oh, is that some. Oh, it looks like a. It's been a mug. Because, <laughs> of course, people just would just throw away broken things like we do now. So. It's probably to be expected that a lot of the things are just broken. Such a concentration of pottery and things. Yeah. Look at this. We just dug out this. Look, what's that say? Oh, it's got words on it. Alex. Alex. Ah. Uh, it says Alex. Perry. Hoik. It's a local one. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh that it's is so thistle. cool. It's got a thistle on. Oh that's really cool. Oh my god. Wow. This is so much fun. I think I think we found I found my first poison Oh my god, yes. Yes, it's look. A blue poison bottle. It doesn't oh have anything god. written on it, but oh my god. There's it's nothing beautiful. on it. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. I'm so happy. We'll have to show you all these things wow. when they're cleaned up. And when it's light. Oh we're actually covered Yay. in mud and we're somewhere we shouldn't be and we're supposed to be food shopping <laughs> we're but we stumbled across this place oh my god this will be an interesting little video <laughs> i really brute please i haven't been bottle digging properly yet so this is kind of my first well victorian bottles and i'm really happy so anyway i would wave goodbye but mum will Bye! Oh, look, this has got the um, original metal thing on. Oh, yeah, the paper on the top. It's like metal. Probably lead. Yeah, look. Really? Lead? Oh, God. It looks like lead. Yeah, I'll show. I'll show. The water's going up my arm. Oh, oh, oh. I've never 
London. This has got the remains of a lead seal as well. Something Liverpool. Trademark. I can't see the top bit's gone, unfortunately. But it has something all the way around it at the top. Look. Some kind of red. I don't know if you can see Maybe that. Maybe we can look it up and try and find something. My favourite bottle. Ah, oh, favourite bottle. This guy. No, this fellow this way. No, up front. Yeah, there we are. In shot. Hey. <laughs> but you'll see it better later. Oh, this has got the date on. 1890. We said late 19th oh, the, century. The, the patent. Oh, but still, we said, we said late. It's we said late. 19th century, didn't we? It's Heinz. It's an, it must be really But good. I don't know if this is a bit later. Well, we're gonna get our lunch and have a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, time for tea. bottles cleaned and scrubbed and they're on the table in front of me right now so what I want to do is show you some of the bottles that have um, embossed words on them and um, tell you a little bit of what I found out on those bottles when I did a bit of searching on the internet so um, they look really beautiful in the window as well so I'll flip the camera around and then I'll talk you through what I found out so far so I'm going to start with this Rowan Trees bottle. Now, um, these, this is a company that is still operating today. They make sweets. But back in the day, they were famous for their Elect Coco, as it has on this bottle. Um, Rowan Trees is a brand, an English brand from York in England. And it's still there. I think um, its headquarters is still in York and it was founded in 1862 by Henry Isaac Roundtree and um, it's I think this lemonade this um, elect lemonade was um, is from the 1900s the very early 1900s it has like a trident kind of symbol on the bottom Roundtree's had a strong connection with um, Quaker philanthropy as well, which is another random bit of information. Um, our next bottle, let's see, I think we'll do the Stevenson's, Stevenson Brothers um, Furniture Cream. This, this bottle's got a bit of damage, it's got a chip there as well, but the Stevenson's Brothers um, were formed in Bradford, another Yorkshire brand, in England, in 1856. And I think this particular bottle dates to around 1908, maybe? Got some triangle on the bottom with G62, or 662, something like that. Um, and this brand is also still going, but nowadays they make um, soaps and uh, sort of personal health care products. Our next bottle, I think, I'll do this sauce bottle, which is Yorkshire Relish. Now, back in the day, this was extremely popular, an extremely popular relish, um, by good old Backhouse and Co. 
good old back curse and curl but yeah this was very popular and i found a few if we found a few of those we've got another one here so if someone was well into their yorkshire relish but it's very popular they they manufactured um millions of bottles of this they claimed it was the most delicious sauce in the world and it was the best selling sauce in the world actually as well and anyway um it was founded by robert goodall um in 1837 and i think this bottle probably dates to around the late um 1800s to the early 1900s but yeah that's the most gorgeous sauce in the world apparently i'd love to have tasted it um, i think our next bottle will do our heinz bottle we found a heinz bottle which of course is tomato sauce they made primarily um tomato sauce and vinegars i think but this is one of the early bottles i think this bottle um probably dates to about 18 87 to 1895 and you can see on the bottom it says the patent was on June the 17th 1890 which is very specific but uh, it was founded in Pennsylvania in America um, by two young entrepreneurs Henry John Hines and L Clarence Noble and the brand was established in 1869 so that's an interesting bit of history and of course Heinz sauces were very popular in Britain as well and um, vital during the war effort actually because the Heinz factory in the UK um, produced food for the nation um, during the war so that's a very interesting um, bit of information I did not know that about Heinz actually And the next bottle, I'm trying to remember all the information, I've got a sheet here I'm trying to refer back to. But this has Edinburgh on it. And this is another popular brand back in the day. And this this bottle, um, it says on here, I think it says, was it? Essence of coffee and chicory. So basically, this was the Victorian Edwardian version of instant coffee, and it was a thick, gooey syrup that you'd pour into your cup and fill with hot water, and they usually mixed it with a bit of, um, of like, cream or something, I think. I think they mixed it with some kind of condensed milk, something like that, some thick condensed milk. Yeah, that's that's how they used to drink coffee back in the day, the most popular way to drink coffee. Because fresh ground coffee would have been quite expensive back then, I imagine. But anyway, the this is uh, Symington and Co. And they were it was established in 1852, this company, by Thomas Symington. I think this bottle dates from between 1890 and 1920, something like that. So I think this dump is looking like it was dumped there between the, the end of the 19th century, not the 18th <laughs> century, and the beginning of the 1900s. It's looking more towards the 1900s point at this stage. But yeah, that's interesting another interesting bit of history um bovril bottles we've got a few bovril bottles bovril these are two early bottles as well because bovril was actually invented by a scotsman a scotsman by the name of john lawson johnston and the company was established in the 1870s um john won a walk a contract a, a won a contract to supply uh, one million cans of beef to the French army 
but the problem was Britain wasn't producing enough beef to send. So he invented bovril, which had beef extract in it, so it wasn't a pure beef product. So they could afford to send that um, over to France, I suppose. But uh, there it was, that was, um, I think, yeah, I think these bottles actually date from between 1890 and 1910. So again, end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. And they're two, two ounce bottles as well. Okay, so the last thing I think we have here that I haven't talked about um, oh no, second last, I've got one more to talk about. It's this oriental toothpaste. For cleaning, for cl no, for cleansing, breathifying and preserving the teeth and gums. Prepared by Dewsbury and Brown, chemists, 113 Market Street, Manchester. Now, these people did very well from themselves and at one point they ended up importing, exporting, well, exporting to America, and it was also quite popular over there, so you actually find these in America. They are slightly different. Instead of 113 Market Street, it just says Manchester, England. So, yeah, if you're from the US, you could very well find one of these in an old dump. I think this was manufactured between 1840 and 1920 as well. So again, from the mid 19th century to the beginning of the 20th century. Um, they actually mainly produced drinks. Um, it was very common for co for chemists back in the day to sort of branch out and sell all kind of, all manner of things really, from toothpaste to drinks and even, you know, other things. They'd go off and make all kinds of things, all kinds of concoctions. Anyway, that was... Um, yeah, that's that's the toothpaste. I don't it was still I couldn't still couldn't find exactly what was oriental about it, but I think that's just that's just a gimmick, isn't it? So I really like that. Um our final find is probably our favorite find because it's we where we found it is um it's quite local to Hoyk. And I think it's funny on the bottom out it says please return the bottle because obviously whoever whoever had this bottle did not return it since it's in a dump um and it's alex piri who made this my name's alex so what i like this bottle even more and it's got a beautiful depiction of a uh, scottish thistle on there a beautiful graphic I do not make things like this anymore botanic and ginger beer maker, Huik. Yeah, this is a beautiful bottle. I couldn't find out much about Alex Perry, actually. I couldn't find anything. So, I mean, I could. you could probably find his grave and look him up on the census and things like that. But there was nothing online about him. There was just people selling more of these bottles. We actually found the lid not so far away and didn't realise until we got home, I'm not sure if you can see it on here, it actually says on the top, Alex Perry Hoik. Can't see it very well. But it's obviously rusted off the, uh, corroded off the top of the bottle. It would have had a rubber, a rubber bung on it, because it's very loose. To push it in and keep the bottle sealed. But yeah, I really like that. It's not damaged in any way either, so very lucky. The other bottles are, well, my, yeah, I'm very pleased with my little poison bottle. It's still quite stained on the outside, but I really love this. Other little strange bottles that God knows what was in them. And lots of ink bottles. We found lots and lots of ink bottles. So yes, that's everything. That's all of them. And I hope you enjoyed this video and um, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below, down here somewhere. So um, we'll see you next time and thank you so much for watching.